Balls. Have you had balls before? Uh, oh, no. no. Okay. So usually you don't eat these. No, I don't, but a lot of people in Fire Island do. Wait, why don't you? I don't know. It's balls. It is balls. Though Jacob has never tasted this uh, particular organ, he's decided to cook them up along with garlic. Pepper. What's good, y'all? It's the Demon Shats React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, C? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Yes, yes. Super excited about this video, guys. If you're new to us, and we're new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 100K. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, I'll be joining a family in the Faroe Islands and tasting some of the most extreme aged rotten meat you'll find anywhere. That was like the most intensely fermented pungent flavor of anything I've had today. <laughs> what just happened? But first, let's back up. Already on the Faroe Islands. So basically, you're just going to need a langoustine and a knife. Hold up. Why? Rotten meat, y'all. Why? Hot meat that, that went bad. Is about to be eaten, so I'm trying to understand how is that even safe. Right. I mean, he's eating. They're eating it at the table, obviously. Child, the most will go <laughs> with leftovers is three days. <laughs> right. <laughs> like we throw food out of the third. Y'all know day. that if like meat sit out too long, it has like a drastic odor to you that makes you want to vomit. Like raw like meat. That raw meat that sits out too long, bro. That mud hit. Mm mm. Okay, now we got supporters in the Faroe Islands, right? Last time we did something, a, a reaction to y'all, y'all was just so shocked that we knew about y'all. Family, come on. Hold on, now. Hold on. Now. Let's find out. Let's find out. Open mind and everything. Let's find out. We've discovered treasures from the deep. Just like that. Oh. Mm-hmm. Today, we're moving our focus to land-based creatures. Do you want to take it? Me? One of the only farmed animals in this country are sheep. Oh, Most people eat sheep the meat here. Yeah? We eat it as a delicacy and also on a daily sheep. basis too. And here in the Faroe Islands, they cook up sheep in ways you've never seen before. What's going on here? Fermentation, my man. Aging it for months until it becomes one of the most shockingly putrid, pungent delicacies I've ever seen. Gosh, what is it like? You know how you describe that? But before we get to that, breakfast. The bone. There it is. Black pudding, as you know. Yeah, you know, I like a lot of different types of pudding growing up. Chocolate, tapioca, not really blood. To make blood pudding. Oh, snap. Okay, so I was just about to give y'all like a compliment on the pudding. <laughs> until I heard to make blood pudding. Like, we, what? like, I was about to go around, a, you know, this is like cinnamon rolls for us. You know what I'm saying? But it's just a pudding dish for us. Our sweet would be cinnamon rolls. and But now he's saying blood it, pudding. It's not sweet. This, you don't think this that, is? It's blood sweet? I, I don't really want to know. Don't like that again. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to know the answer. I mean, y'all shouldn't know, right? I right? really don't want to know. Yo, okay. I, I don't want to know. First, you need to make the stuffing. A combination of fresh sheep's blood, an impressive mound of brown sugar, flour, and salt. Add ground cinnamon, ground cloves, raisins, rolled oats, and finally, some coal fat. Why do you think they call it pudding? I think it's a British thing, right? Yeah, actually, translated word by word, it's blood sausage. That's what I'm more familiar with. The pudding thing was always hilarious to me. It was off-putting. <laughs> Once it cooks through, slice now, it. No, 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 no. I'm going to say this. We can't be overly like, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I guess like extravagant. What? Not extravagant. Exaggerated. exaggerated. <laughs> we can't be over exaggerated with how they're eating their food. Because we've seen this all, you know what I'm saying, butchered and cooked before. Yeah. Um, but I guess for me, it's watching them take their dishes and and cook it in the way they're cooking it that's kind of cringing me right now like yeah. a big two tub of blood is yeah. being cooked down with sweet products with oats and like oats that's is one not, of my favorite grains like is it sweet because they mix brown sugar and all that like I mean, like do it high the, the, the taste. taste right yeah 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 i would think but in then how it's cooked, it ends up being black. I think that's and in a blood. My mind, I think that's a blood. Yeah, yeah, in my mind, anything that's like black is burnt to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. So that crunchy feel gonna come through at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
This don't look nothing crunchy. This, this looks straight this, doughy. This, yeah, this not my, this not uh our version of pudding. Our version of pudding is like a sweet. How do you describe pudding? I had a hard time saying um the other word I was trying cream, to say. Sweet this cream, is, maybe. I think this is getting taking my head into a fog level because I'm trying to understand and comprehend most of this. But um different. Very different. Very different. It with butter. All right, it is very Ooh. soft. One sausage for breakfast. Let's go. Let's go. Fascinating. Really Fascinating. interesting Very flavor. Good. It almost has a slightly bready texture. And yeah, cinnamon, sugar, some sweetness inside. That's really nice. You can't taste the intestines at all. No. Where'd you get the blood sausage from? Did you? Oh, yeah, and they put it in intestines. Oh. Okay, so. That's not raisin. Yeah, they put raisins in there. So. That was probably intestine hanging out, I saw, though. Raisins is like a little crunchy. I mean, small. It's going to shrivel, you know? We hit five. I was, yeah, you made me feel, oh, I was going to say, so is it like a texture of like a brownie? Because how Sunny was describing it, that's what it, it kind of. Extra fudge brownie. Not just a regular brownie, extra fudge <laughs> brownie. Because <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. Yeah. And where did you learn this recipe from? From my mother. Amazing. Oh, I can eat a whole okay. freaking sausage of this. <laughs> Today, Susanna and her husband are giving me a real taste of Faroese home cooking. Their friend Jonathan is here to help. How do you say delicious in Faroese? Oh, true. Or au met à l'égout. Two words. Do you have anything with less than eight syllables? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Great. Okay, so I know so in the I islands, something. Fish. I noticed something. And I, I don't know if you noticed it, because it was real fast, real quick. But he said that his friend name is Jonathan. Mm -hmm. But his name was spelled J-O-H-H-E-I-N. J-O-H-H-E-I-N. That's interesting. Where's, where's, That's an where's, interesting where's... spelling. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, so I wonder if, like, there's... Let us know the rules. <laughs> Right. <laughs> are super important. Just the fishing industry yeah. in general is huge yeah. here and people eat a lot of fish, but how important are sheep here? Very important. Yeah, yeah, I think they're very important. Yeah. Because most people eat sheep meat here. We eat it as a delicacy and also on a daily basis too. Sheep are one of the only land animals that can survive the harsh year-round weather of the Faroe Islands. Beautiful. It's a native breed that can put up with the consistent cold, rain, and wind. I heard on these islands there are two sheep for every person. Close enough. Do you own any sheep? Not anymore. I sold everything. Now I have absolutely nothing. I have a spider or two, but that's it. You have a stock portfolio? No, don't. Oh, not even then. A lot. retirement account? No. Okay. Unlike their friend, Thomas's family what? does own a flock of sheep. Every October, they retrieve some of the flock and slaughter them before winter yeah. comes. I'm here to experience the delightfully bizarre way. Not the sheep, guys. Not yeah, the you're sheep. loving on them sheep a little too hard. No, They're about no. to go. <laughs> They're about to go. I don't know. Don't fall for no, them. No, no, no. Like, you know, we eat chicken. We chicken, eat yeah. Get the bird. Cow. Yeah, cow. Yeah, you know, good cow going. Mm -hmm. Those things, I'm like, you know, when I see a cow in person, I'm not necessarily thinking, like, oh, you taste good at night. <laughs> Yeah, you know, mm, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's like some animals. I look at them and I see their souls. Oh, uh, I, I feel you. I feel yeah. you like a horse. Yeah, like a horse. Like, like when I you see, see their a, souls. yeah, them big long eyelashes. Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, sheep are very beautiful animals. Yeah, but you know what happens. <laughs> If the sheep is prepared. You know, I've eaten sheep and mutton and lamb in many different countries, but never in a place like the Faroe Islands. I know here there's very different techniques for preservation, for cooking food fresh, but also for preserving meat over time, including some fermented and dry meat. Does it have a fermented smell to it? It absolutely has. Sometimes it's so strong it makes you cough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the fermented smell of it. I have a lot to learn today. First things first, we have to go get that sheep. We have to go get this sheep and kill it. And kill it. No, Folks on these islands. Yeah, see, we could be at the table with we could, we could be at the table with Sunny, bro. We would have been in the background somewhere. Oh, no, he don't know. He's like, y'all stop. We'll be I need y'all to stop. Sheep. Wait, we gotta try it first. Like, yes. Yeah, oh, I couldn't. I couldn't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's that smell, bro. Like you know, rotten meat. When you smell rotten meat, no one thinks about eating that. So I want to know. I hope he asks because he asks these questions a lot when it comes to these type of dishes. Yeah. What are the health benefits of this type yeah, of food? Yeah, You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you get sick behind eating this type of food? <sighs> have a very hands-off approach to raising sheep. In fact, they do almost nothing at all, as the sheep roam freely, chopping way. away at the island's lush grasses. When it's time for the slaughter, the sheep are captured and brought to temporary barns, where they might stay for just a day or two. Do the sheep here ever live in barns? No. Always outside, always eating fresh grass. Yeah. So it costs like nothing to feed them. No. <laughs> Thomas and his brothers own this, and the land around it. So. Really? Yeah. 
they have this property within the village and its only purpose is to hold oh, sheep. I wanted to stop when it was showing, you know, the valley and yeah, the yeah. mountains and all that. That is so beautiful. They have one of the most greenest pastures ever. That's, yeah, 100% that is beautiful. facts. Yeah. I wonder what they do. Like, do it rain a lot there? I, I believe so. I would think so. It, it always kind of looked like you can tell the sun is not as as beaming because of the, yeah. the luxury of the grass. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I hear in Louisiana when our sun come out, grass turn yellow. Yeah. And uh, sometimes brown. Sometimes even brown. But look at it. It's looking. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> For one or two days, yeah. a few times a year, yeah. that is balling. Once their short stay ends, the sheep are taken to their final destination, where slaughtering and butchering will commence. Right here, we have Jacob, professional sheep wrangler. Right now, he has to get the one sheep, which seems like it would be easy, except for this one sheep has a lot of space to run around and try to escape. I have a very important job. When he goes in, I have to hold the door shut. Is that right? Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Jacob going in for the equally Run. easy job. I'm going to hold the door shut. Yep, Run. I got that. Now he's going for the sheep. Run. The sheep is trying to get away. It's trying to hold oh, no. It is panicking. It's trying to come out the wood. Run. But it's not going to work. You can tell Jacob a pro. He's got it in a headlock already. He's no, kind of riding it like a small pony. Back away slowly. Okay. Selected sheep weigh in at about 40 to 50 pounds, while the rest are kept for breeding mm. to ensure the cycle of life continues. Mission complete. Yeah. So many things I love to do. Back at their home, the same garage where they parked their car is about to become a slaughterhouse. Okay. Okay. Yo, so I was, you know, minding my business one day on social media and I rolled across a, a video of someone butchering and slaughtering a cow. Oh, no, I saw I the whole that. procedure. This is my like real Why first time watching you it. You know what I'm saying? It. So I seen it. And yeah, it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. You like stuff. I, I wasn't I wasn't norm to it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But now that I've seen it, I was like, yeah, interesting stuff. Mm. I, I wasn't shaken by it. I'm shaken by the sheep. Sheep tried to run. <laughs> During the mid-October school break, Thomas and Jacob gather for the annual slaughter. Do you ever see people outside slaughtering sheep? Drop in the comic section what just happened. They didn't show it, but I seen them put a tube to the sheep head. <laughs> Whoa, you okay there? No. I'm gonna need you to shake back and come back. Come back to the sheep. I'm wheel. trying. What that was? What was that? It's like a, what did you think? Mm. Mm. Never, because it's also considered very bad to slaughter sheep outdoors. It will cool down the carcass immediately. Below eight degrees, the fermentation stops. If you want to ferment the meat, it's important that you don't cool it down immediately. That will stop the bacteria to develop. After the blood is drained, Jacob removes yeah. the shanks, then moves on to skinning. Yeah, yeah. So, so hold on. No, 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 no. So if this is the process, this is exactly what they did with the cow. They took the hooves and all that. They broke it down. And yeah, and I think what's going to happen next is norm to me. So I've seen the process and I'm thinking that's how they do every animal, the same procedure. This is going to be your first time? No, they're they, they not about to show this whole thing on this camera. I mean, I remember last time we was watching a video like this with the Mansa. Uh, what's the name of that group? The a trap, Messiah? I mean? Messiah? They blurred it out. Okay, so they didn't show it. They may not show it on this one. You saw how easy it just came off. Well, I got them tools. <sighs> Drink a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't act like you've never thought about it. I don't like to brag. So humble. Oh, please. I insist. Just this one time, could you tell me? The man who knows my time is took it with him to his grave. <laughs> Whoa, ominous. All right, that was dark. What are you doing now? You're reaching inside its body? Um, are you skinning it just with your hands? Yes. Holy cow. Jacob and his father butcher about 20 sheep per year, enough to last throughout the entire next year. During this time, he's known as the butcher. But for the rest of the year, he's a boat machinery engineer. How old were you when you first saw this process? Four or five years. And then how much therapy have you required since that time? No. This is what bothers me. It's like, it's so normal here. Yeah, father taught me, his father taught him, and that's how it rolls. It seems like raising sheep, slaughtering sheep, it's like a normal part of daily life in the Faroe Islands. It is. In fact, Faroe Islands mean sheep island. Sheep have been a vital part of sustaining life on the Faroe Islands through its history, ever since the Norse settlers brought them here during the age of Vikings. Some of these ancient recipes and methods of meat preservation have survived to this very day. I've never seen a garage like this, I must say. Like a professional slaughtering setup. You have everything you need for the whole operation right here in this garage. Do, well, yeah, you know that's about, not so like... You just complimented the sheep. That's the only one I'm going to say. It's that was, clean. That was very clean cut. Really it was, huh? So yeah. I felt like you should be okay with so far with the rest of the procedure. Like if it comes down to like, I feel like every time they shave or, you know, um... 
do their little thing, the skinning part, it, you should be okay with that. I mean, it's not bloody, so. Yeah, 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 you're right. Every family has that, right? <laughs> I mean, is this typical in the Faroe Islands that people are slaughtering sheep in their own garage? Yes. Oh, wow. Usually, in a setting like this, certain tasks are divided among men and women. Men deal with the slaughter and skinning, while cleaning and cutting the organs is reserved for the women and the girls. Once butchering Look, is complete, babe, the, the girls will be sold. Even the hands dirty, the babies. Baby, they used to it. I am not. True. And and we we grew up with hunters and farmers <laughs> and all that, and I'm still not used to that. No, I understand. I cringe at, I understand. at fish getting clean. I mean, this is oh lord, <laughs> this should be. It's not bad. Look, see what I'm saying? This is the rip. It's not as bloody. Right. The organs will be cooked and the coal fat will be fermented. Oh Every scrap from the sheep will oh be utilized sheep. in some way, <laughs> but some parts won't be utilized until oh months sheep. down the road. How far back does this tradition go? It's hard to tell, but hundreds and hundreds of years. It's just an ancient way of preserving meat. Sheds like these, found all throughout the islands, serve one purpose, to create the ideal conditions for a controlled rot. I'm assuming this type of room has a specific name, right? Chocolate. Like, you couldn't turn this into an Airbnb. Would not recommend it, though, but... Why not? <laughs> you could. What people don't realize watching right now is this room is extremely drafty. It's not like a direct wind, but there's a draft that comes through the walls. Exactly. The local weather and the room itself ensure the right temperature, humidity, and airflow. We, we tend to just use the nature to control the fermentation. So if it's too cold, the fermentation doesn't go well. If it's too hot, we probably too fermented. Luckily, we have an average, more or less perfect climate for fermentation of meat. That's why we do it. These are slaughtered just yesterday and today, and the process of fermentation is starting now. And it will go on for three months. In three months, it will look like this. So do y'all chop it as it go? Or do it just shrivel up? I mean, it's meat, so... Y'all, this... I've never seen nothing like this before. I, I mean, was, I've seen, you know, how they they made the, the beef jerky and the bill tongue. kind of look like the same process. Yeah, it looked like the same process, but like... Sheep jerky. Sheep jerky. Sheep jerky. This different for my eyes. <laughs> At what point do you cut the limbs off? For certain occasions, like December, uh, mid-December, you start eating the ribs. In Christmas, you start eating more and more. And this last box you eat is actually the leg. Okay. So it's a process. Gosh, what is it like? Do you know how you describe that? Hard to describe, but something very strong. <laughs> Taste this one. And then when you cut it open, that's when the ammonia comes out. Yeah. This has uh -uh. such a strong smell to it. So I've just peeled the fat away quite easily. And then what remains is a semi-dry, kind of gummy, soft meat. True. Oh, that's lovely. A very unique, fascinating texture. It's a melt-in-your-mouth kind of texture. It does have a slight cheesy quality yeah, to it. That's exactly the taste you're talking about. All right, y'all, so as long as you have a deep freezer and an outhouse, you can put all your raw meat back there. In the deep freezer? I mean, you need something, not, not maybe not a deep freezer, <laughs> but something that's cool, you know, like, that can maintain a nice airflow within the meat so the meat can go bad in a good way. Do y'all have mosquitoes and stuff over there? Probably, probably not. I mean, they got Because I'm thinking I think of, the like, flies and stuff. Right, and the flies, you don't see flies in here. It look very clean. Yeah, it do look clean. I give them that, yeah. that, that area, that, what, what do you call it? The haja. Oh. The jara, the jaha. <laughs> Something like that. The yeah, HJ that, kind that. of clash together. <laughs> yeah. The, well, we would call it a shed. Uh, <laughs> Straight up. Uh, the aisle so is a shed. That, that place looks very clean. Like, it, you could tell, like, everything is clean. Yeah. Yeah. So, I give him that. It's just very different. A different but he process. Smelt it. He smelt it before he bit into it. You think? He, oh, the he ammonia? Did. Yeah. Yeah, he smelt it. Mm. Hey, I don't know, y'all. Some of the Scandinavian cheeses and French cheeses, they have this exactly this kind of taste. Yeah, it's where the smell is kind of offensive, but then when you bite into it, uh -huh. it's all gone. Speaking of extreme, what is this right here? This is the same fermented meat, but cooked in the broiler for about an hour. This whole room reeks of this flavor. For us, it smells like Christmas. <clears throat> it is so cost. intense. The outside is crisped up in the oven a bit. It's fatty and juicy. Everything looks great about it, except when you take a whiff. That is intense. Cheers. Suck this finger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I, I hate it and I love it at the same time. It's like my mouth reeks of dairy and old cheese. Blue cheese taste. Yes, the texture is outstanding. Incredibly tender, moist, succulent on the inside. And then there's just a fascinating funk that goes along with it that is like just on the edge of being overbearing. And then once it's gone, you want a little bit more. This is the art of creating your own taste of meat. Mm. Ain't no way, cause I know sheep had sheep has a real unique taste to it. But if you let it age yeah. for months and then you come back and eat it again, they said now it tastes like dairy cheese. Yeah, like he's, in, in a sense, you know what I'm saying? It, comparing you, it to cheese and like I've eaten, you know, different types of cheeses. There's some cheeses I don't like now, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. blue cheese they mentioned as well. Yeah, I like blue cheese though. Okay, hold on now. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. No meat. Nah, I, I don't know if I could do that. Ammonia, like. <laughs> yeah. Once you said that, I would. I can't eat uh -uh. anything that stinks. Uh uh. For mm -hmm. one, presentation matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Presentation. And then secondly, if it, the odor of the dish, if it has a smell that doesn't fits my, you know, my my nose follicles, <laughs> then I don't think me and the dish is gonna have a a, um, a relationship. Yeah. And I've eaten hog head, head cheese before, and that's like something that's like extreme, right? you're gonna stop at hog head. Hog head cheese. Okay. And grind up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've eaten that before. Like, I used to love that as a kid, but I don't know. Especially seeing the process. But after they cooked it down, how he held on to the meat, you would better. not know. You mm -hmm. wouldn't even know yeah, until you better. taste it or smell it. But then. Uh. Again. Exactly. What is this? Alcohol. That's what we're missing. <laughs> Eat that one. Still have to taste in your mouth. Mm. See, oh, that's Hala. awesome. It compares perfectly with this. I don't like things that leave a nasty taste in my mouth. Mm -mm. Like even onions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. I, mm, -mm. Mm, mm mm. That's what. That's when we gotta draw the line. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you had this shed in particular? From 1998. Wow. I just, you would never expect it as you look down the landscape and you see all these different houses like you're in a small cottage. Meanwhile, between the houses, there's these places for the sheep to stay for a day or two before butchering. There's garages fully outfitted with the means to slaughter the sheep. And there's places like this fully meant just for aging meat. Is this common? Oh, yeah. So wild. Soon, I'll face off with the sheep's face as the family prepares a traditional faraway supper. But first, an appetizer that's too good to pass up. Balls. Have you had balls before? Uh, oh, no. no. Okay. So usually you don't eat these. No, well, I don't, but a lot of people in Fair Islands do. Wait, why don't you? I don't know. It's balls. It is balls. Though Jacob has never tasted this uh, particular organ, he's decided to cook them up along with garlic, paprika, <laughs> steak seasoning, and pepper. Just by looking at it, you think it's little breasts, breasts like. No, baby. They didn't say breasts. They say. You would think it looked like little they breast say. meat, but yeah, no. like chicken breasts. Lean. <laughs> I don't think I can continue this video no more. You I've okay? seen everything else, but they they about to try the balls. You okay? I actually got a tear. <laughs> Damn, the sheep was my a brother. Where'd you get this recipe? <laughs> I love to cook, so put the ingredients that I like. Mm -hmm. See, here's what you do: you go sure. plain ball to really appreciate the taste. Cheers. Cheers, man. <laughs> Mmm, that's lovely. Definitely good. A little bit fatty. You got a nice little crust on the outside. Got a little bit of a crunch. Mmm, these are sophisticated oh, balls. And so usually <laughs> you're throwing the balls out or just giving them to the dogs? I give it to the dogs, yeah. Okay, they must love that. What about whales? Do whales have balls? I don't know. Do all mammals have balls? Never seen a whale with two big balls hanging out. <laughs> yo, yo. They would create a lot of drag in the yeah, water. <laughs> they wouldn't be it's quite an honor for having us here today. You have a beautiful family. It's 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 crispy it's on the outside. I don't want to stop to talk it's about it. Why we gotta talk about it? <laughs> That's along the lines of fine dining. Girl, <laughs> like caviar. <laughs> you're having too much fun. <laughs> We're home, and this is some really incredible food that I'm very honored to be trying for the first time. That was a good one. That was a good one. Before we build up to our main course, the sheep head, I'll be trying this. Before we build up to our main course, the sheep head, I'll be trying this. This is made with sheep intestines. Oh, look how they look. It looked like Buna. A Buna think, link. You think Buna? Yeah, it looked like a link. A link of Buna. I mean, I mean, you just yeah. never know. That are stuffed with fermented coal fat. After cooking, it looks a little bit like this. It's usually paired with fermented fish, but on the Faroe Islands, potato is always a welcome choice. Now, do you want thin slices like this? How's that? No. Uh -uh. That's like a radish. 
Oh, you really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, he says. I thought we might take a bite together, but... Frolicked. Wow. Delicious. It is delicious. It's very salty. It's heavy, but not enough to make you feel like you're eating a stick of butter. It is nice to mix it with a little bit of potato for it some is, balance. definitely, yeah. I think it's amazing. When's yeah. the last time you had that? Every Christmas, uh, actually. Does it remind you of Christmas? So you guys, yeah. let me know. Is this something that you can try for the first time had you never ate it before? Obviously, my man, he's killing it right now. But do you think that this is something that you have to grow into, like, as a child? Because when you're young and you try something, it becomes your taste. You're like, oh, yeah, I ate this since I was a kid. I think I would have to grow into it. I think this, I would have to grow into it. This isn't something I could be introduced to as I wasn't, an adult. Yeah, this is not something that just comes out the refrigerator for me, you no. know? It's Ooh, very Lord. different. That last scene still got my head, though. <laughs> Messed up. Lord. Very different. Yeah, I actually, I do like that. I think we should move on to this over here. Next, all the organs collected today, the stomach, the lungs, the intestines, are cooked together in one pot, along with this, sheep liver stuffed with fat and garlic. Now we've known... This sheep doesn't make it out. The, the whole sheep, I'm sorry, babe, go ahead. Child, whole sheep, man. I'm surprised they didn't keep the hooves. Right, that's not like the only thing they're not eating. Because where we're from, like, they eat the entire animal. But I've never known somebody to eat lungs. Nah, they going in in, more beast. Maybe nothing is left. Nothing is left. But the but the hooves, cause like I, I say that yeah. because where we're from, they eat pig feet. <laughs> Notice I say they. <laughs> <laughs> My stomach can't handle that. Like I I'm I visualize things a little bit too much. I think mean, people who really enjoy chitlins would love this. Because when I it when so. the food smells like that in the kitchen and you can still continue to get food. Yeah yeah yeah. Like when you can continue eating it like this, yeah. then yeah, I think you're the one that has yeah. to. Um, yeah, I'm the I'm the person. That would cook I like remember the very first time, like my very first introduction to country cooking, when I went visit my dad in the country, and I went to my aunt's house, right, and I walked through the door, and I'm like, baby, uh, what happened to the sewer? Hmm. I mean, the sewer. Hmm. Like, yeah, I I can't do anything that smells like, like a pipe them bus or something. Just so though. sour. It's so stank. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> After cook it, sizzle it on a frying pan with butter, garlic, and onion. A big basket of goodies. There's different what? shapes, different sizes, and some are super crispy, like they were just taking on the yeah, bottom of that pan it. forever. Nah, it's... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rich, greasy, delicious, not gamey at all so far. That first piece was delicious. Let's try this out. It's interesting because it's my oh. first time in my life trying these types of sheep, and they don't have that usual kind of muttony, sheepy, gamey flavor. Yeah, we think so. And we have the liver with the fat inside of it. Garlic and fat. You know, the thing that, that bothers me is that whenever I'm eating my chicken, all my chicken gonna taste the same. Not when, really. Yeah, Based when you on the flavor. Okay, okay. Like if you don't have seasoning. Well, if you're looking for, if you're going that way, but I'm talking about they just like, Eating the meat without no oh. sauce, no nothing. Every oh. single part of the oh. animal is probably having a different level of taste to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the mixture of that would probably just pause me every once in a while. Because it's a different cause flavor. Because you got to pick, you know what I'm saying? Now you're picking at your food. For them, they probably like, oh, this is all just bomb. But for me, for a first time experience, I know that this probably tastes a little uh, different from this one and ABCD type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. That inner part is so important. Having some of that fat in there and extra flavor from the garlic. Tastes like onions in there, too. Yeah. Thank God. Sometimes I guess, and I'm wrong. It's absolutely humiliating. <laughs> Last but not least, the sheep head. Oh, my God. I thought we were First, the today. hair must be removed oh. by way of torching. It's braised for hours with a pinch of salt. When he was a kid, they got the head for dinner. If they didn't eat head, they didn't get anything. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Is the, whole is the head bottom. the best part? So, 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 we you it's, give the children a head, child, if, 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 hold up, wait a minute, hold up, if I'm a child and somebody put a head on my plate, <laughs> I ain't eating nothing, I'm being a, a vegan, because what, yeah, they gonna, you better eat with that, the eyeball and then, better the, eat that, child, mm. look at it, y'all, I heard him say, let me see if it's this, look at this, the, the this is jaw? the face. This is the jawline right here. The teeth still attached. Oh, God. Mm -mm -mm. Let's continue. Kind of inside and outside. I want to try this cheek right here. This looks amazing. Cheek. Mm. 
Mm. It's interesting because it's not even really warm. It's kind of cooled down. It's like a little firm, a little soft. The fat is really rendered down. Very good. Very good. Here's the tongue. I'm just passing for you. So I've noticed no, that they, 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 yeah, that's the tongue. Mm-hmm. You said that? Well, they, they, they boiled all of this. Yeah. This wasn't like, this was boiled for hours, or yeah. maybe an hour or 30 minutes. But they boiled all this, like, I think that's why, that's why it is what it is, like it is. And yeah. Stuff, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and again, guys, we are from southern Louisiana. Yeah. Y'all know we, 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 southern pride, right? But, right. um, I just want y'all to understand, like, it's not that foreign to us about, like, you know, exotic foods. Our people eat pig lip. <laughs> right. The most you probably see in the fridge is like squid or octopus. Octopus. One, one don't of the eat other. No octopus. Squid. No, it's octopus. Who eat that? Nobody. I haven't eaten it, but I'm saying like if you go in a food aisle, you will see that in oh, the Oh, yeah. You do see like, it. Like you will see some you exotic see. animals, yeah, you do. fish, stuff of that nature. But Chicken fingers. <laughs> Chicken got fingers? <laughs> feet. Feet. <laughs> Chicken <laughs> feet. Chicken feet, y'all. I'm thinking of the nails. Yeah, it's on the... Chicken that, feet. Yeah, they ain't Yeah, yeah. Everything, all of this, like, like we see this stuff, but dang, y'all. Mm. And all of this is very nice. I would love to try the eyeball with you. There you the go. Eyeball. Cheers. Very fatty, so. Yo, he have a really good job of maintaining his face expressions because, yeah. My eyeball hurts. My eyeball I hurts. don't know why. When I was eating the balls, my <laughs> neck started hurting. I'm like, what the hell? Oh, I'm sitting paint oh, sheep. for the sheep, man. Those sheep over there don't have a chance. Bro, the eyes? Everything. Like, nothing's spared. Is, is, that, is that, like, literally taken out of the sheep and put into a pot? Like, like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, it's still together. It was in there. It was in the head. So why y'all don't eat the hooves? The tail? Y'all eat the tail? The tail was getting fermented too. Up was there. it? They okay, it was up. hanging around. Okay, that's the only thing y'all not eating the hooves. Oh, love. Oh, child. Did heads? Oh, wow. Oh. Cheers. Very fat, so. Yes, say something. Are these fermented heads? Oh, wow. That was like the most intensely fermented, slightly rancid, pungent flavor of anything I've had today. What just happened? How long has that been fermented? 10 to 12 days. And fermenting in this case means what? It's been put. It was left out there. <laughs> wow, that was intense. But that's not going to kill me? <laughs> Bruh. What? I wanted to ask you a personal question. Yeah, no brother. Growing up here, how was it fitting into a culture that's rather homogenous? Everyone kind of, well not kind of, everyone looks the same basically. You look different. Jacob and his sister were adopted by Thomas and Susanna at a young age. They came here from Colombia and they've lived here ever since. For me it was hard because my father's white and my mother's white. And when I got my first child, Thomas, my son, that was uh, I think one of the happiest moments in my life. Now somebody like... looks like me and who's your son? He's my son. He wanted us adopted as young as possible. When I got to that age, they told us everything. I think that has helped us a lot. Someone gave me life, but my parents gave me the opportunity to live it. Because he's my dad, that's 100% sure. And the same with mom. I couldn't, I couldn't have asked for better parents. Best ever food review show. I like yeah. that he ended it this way. Yeah, that was beautiful, man. Um, that he had, that obviously he was given a chance of life. Yeah, you know yeah. Um, you know, we always like to see diversity yeah. everywhere um, that we, you know, dig into like the culture and the history about a place. And I like that he chose this family to highlight because it's, you know, as we journey abroad <laughs> this year, right? We want to go to places that's diverse. And of course, you know, he's not black. We're black. He's not black. But it's like just knowing that the people there were open mm -hmm. to loving someone that didn't look like them. Right. That's what I appreciate. Right, right, right. Um, I'm kind of just lost for words. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> I don't know, what like part are you stuck? I don't know, like it's, the sophistication. No, not well. That part was hard too. 
It's just the whole part. I think the part where they took the meat and they hung it out for months. Mm. I mean, y'all got groceries set, obviously, for years, yes, years. Yes. You feel me? But it's eating the meat at a level that you're eating it at. Because from my experience, seeing smelling meat that has went bad, it's yeah. hard to smell. Like yeah. I don't. It's hard to smell, really. So this was a this this was different. Very different. Very different. Um, but again, once you cook it down, it's like you see it and you wouldn't even think twice that it's a been left out rotten. for months. Or rot, rotten is the word. Rotten meat. I'm just saying. Mm. I'm I'm still stuck at the, the sheep running and I'm telling it to run it. I know it don't have a chance. I'm <laughs> not stuck a little, there. <laughs> nope, not even, nope, not at yeah. all. But this is very interesting. Very interesting, very different. <laughs> um, great watch, of course. Thanks, you guys, for the vid. Yeah. Um, learn something today. Right. You can eat rotten meat. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You you can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Sierra got a weak stomach. <laughs> oh man. But, um, Yo, she do. Yeah. yeah, I do. But we hope you guys enjoyed this video with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like support the channel that way. As well as our join feature to become a VIP member of the channel. Send in your reaction requests to our description box below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.